All right, now we're back to Scorsese. Both of these films are black comedies, and I think this one, The King of Comedy, is satirical because this movie feels like Scorsese saying his experience, or at least a version for most people that want to get within the business, how it actually is through Rupert Pumpkin or Pumpkin, Pumpkin, something like that. It sounds like Pumpkin, but it's like Pumpkin because he's so naive to everything that's going on, what it takes to be a great comic slash comedian, and just seeing the behind the scenes and waiting and never getting exposed and just never getting to have the opportunity to show his work i feel like back in the 80s and even now maybe not now but like 10 15 years ago there's like this hierarchy of hey you have to do this this and this in order to make it or someone has to like you or you have to do certain things and so most people and maybe scorsese experienced this as well he didn't have the chance nor opportunity to show what he can do in terms of filmmaking that's kind of where the film is kind of going but also you have a great performance by de niro he just wants to make it he wants his like 15 minutes of fame in order to show the whole world and everyone in his little town and bar his girlfriend his friend this other comic jerry langford like hey i have the talents i have the wit let me show you and then there's also a talk about obsession and how much de niro's character is obsessed with jerry langford and how that just escalates into wanting to meet him and then stay in his office being outside of the like waiting room and having to call security truly believes that he has an appointment and so he just stays there he gets kicked out goes back in because jerry is there because of his friend who also wants to meet him because of a letter or wants to give him a letter and so you have that part of it once he does he gets chased around and it's like played for laughs because he's so naive and thinking that he can actually have a meeting with gary langford he's probably busy in a meeting and then it eventually leads into both him and his friend kidnapping langford and that's what gets him his chance to show the whole world who he is and how great he is the fact that it took that much is ridiculous and then whenever jared tries to convince de niro hey i'll listen to you come to my office i'll give you a chance you don't know how it is is like i think he's telling the truth here about what makes his show work but the actual like hey i'm gonna give you a chance maybe that part's a lie of giving this person hope but then not actually giving him the opportunity going along with the whole obsession stuff whenever he's having a date with his girlfriend all he's talking about is comedy himself and jerry he's not talking about her or anything else and i'm more shocked that she even still cares about him like that should have been it but that makes her a promise he's gonna be on tv and he actually does and so she kind of i guess admires him for that i guess but i feel like that should have been over with eventually rubric gets his chance and he's actually really good like i thought he was gonna fail because he's still living with his mother that date with his girlfriend was kind of awful in his own room in his own little world and bubble he has his own tonight show host thing set up in his room and it's like maybe this guy's a bit unhinged too naive things that he can actually make it and so when he's actually good it's shocking because you know people like that people are laughing they're clapping he has his 15 minutes of fame and then goes out serves like i think 12 years in prison but the damage is already done because people now love him he has books now and he finally has his fame throughout his whole life he's like in his 30s and he's shown his own mother his girlfriend his friend to jerry to everyone hey i can be a superstar i can be famous and i can be a great comedian i could be the king of comedy for one night and he actually did it after hours is the other film and it's kind of the opposite where it doesn't have much to say but the whole movie is essentially this guy's worst day ever where everything just conveniently just goes right or wrong in this case and all he wants to do is get home after a really weird and kind of airy date that whole sequence of him going to the girl's house meeting her roommate i'm assuming and then having her do this art thing and then massaging her back kind of like weird and eerie messages like the whole sequence felt scary to me because he's looking around I about all of these little details and thinking where's this girl that i'm gonna go out with he starts massaging this other girl's shoulders and neck and whatnot and she falls asleep that's weird girl comes back she's like super suspect of this the other girl comes in being like is she here already and it's like wait what and then he finds like pills in marcy's bag the whole setup was just kind of scary to me i don't know if that was the whole point of it because it's supposed to be a comedy and so i was like wait why am i scared but once he does that he kind of just tells her off being like okay i don't want to go on a date with you it starts raining he wants to go home but he doesn't have enough money to get on the subway and so old man's like fuck off you have to pay the exact amount or else i'm in trouble gives him a hard time he tries to go past it there's a guard there good luck okay gotta go goes back to the house and the roommate's still there she has another guy and she's into like this like bdsm type stuff and then finds that marcy has taken pills and so she's dead it just went to zero to 100 real quick he has to leave calls in for a dead body goes to this bar this guy named tom he owns it and conveniently this guy tom is the 
a boyfriend to Marcy and so it's really convenient but you know you could push it off as whatever it's a movie I'll accept it but just the exact convenience of that and kind of reveals like you're about to go out with this girl and she had a boyfriend and everything how convenient he was having talks with Tom about trusting him because he wants to go to his house to unlock something and then if he did he would have found out about him and Marcy about to go out and so now he's really fucked up of like okay I need to get home I don't want to be involved in any of this it sounds like bad juju bad luck I just want to go waitress there I forgot her name I think it's Julie but she's having these advances on him but he doesn't want any of it and so that upsets her you would think that that would be the end of it right and then there's this whole part of like he's wanted for burglary and it was by Julie she set this whole thing up because of rejection and so now he has to deal with that and a bunch of people chasing after him and so all of this is in the after hours like past 11 past midnight just seeing what the city does to him late at night is ridiculous but fun and then going back all the way through the whole like clay newspaper thing art thing sculpture he has to hide in that in order to hide from julie and the others and the police or whatever but then this lady wants to keep him in this until guess what conveniently two robbers come in and rob this piece because it's his art but this would lead it to him falling out conveniently at home so he's finally at home in the office and then the movie ends in a really cool pan shots throughout the whole office and that's the whole movie paul's worst day ever and so despite all of this despite watching a movie about a person's worst day ever somehow it was still a lot of fun and that was it for Scorsese's comedy films. Two films that are easily like top 10 because they're so much fun. King of Comedy is a satire on like Hollywood itself or maybe Scorsese's own personal experience of trying to make it in the industry while also the whole fan obsession with celebrities. That stuff's really weird and creepy. And then at the same time telling a very naive story about a guy trying to make it in the comedy scene. After Hours it's just about the worst day ever conveniently throughout the whole movie. And sometimes it can be like, eh, okay, whatever that pass for this movie but both films despite being comedies there are some parts especially in after hours where that first sequence why wow, was so fucking creepy i don't know why maybe it's because if i start seeing or just feeling red flags from a person i'm like okay i want to get out i don't want to be a part of this no more let me go but that is it for me this has been the road so far and thank you for watching